Hi everyone, it's Leslie and welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since I've made a video, so I'm pretty excited to show you all this uh, link today. I'm going to be showing you how to make oval links like this. I had made this necklace and got a lot of response from it, and so I thought you, I would show you how to make these, these oval links. It's basically a combination of size 11 seed beads and size like this and size 15 seed beads. Uh, we're going to put the size 15s in the center and those are smaller and that will make the curve and then we'll fill in. It's basically 10 rows of peyote stitch and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the center and then we'll build up the outside and then we'll build up the inside and zip the two sides together. That's how it'll work. So uh, you need like I said, size 11 seed beads, size 15 seed beads. I'm going to do it in a few different colors so you'll be able to see the contrast. I have a size 12 beading needle and I have that because of the, um, the size 15 beads. I also have two arms lengths of size or a six pound fire line. That's a monofilament. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up 17 of these 15 beads. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Seventeen. Okay, then we're going to pick up nine of the size 11 beads. That'll be for the side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we're going to do the same again. Seventeen and nine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. And nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. All right. Can we see everything? Okay. The first thing we're going to do is go back through one of the size 15 beads and make a circle. Now, if you want to put something like one of these shell links, uh, and have that worked into it, you need to put those in now. You need to put two of them in to have one on either end. If you want to hook them together with some peyote uh, stitch bands, you don't need to do anything. And, and it does make it a little more complicated, so I'm not going to show you that. It will be hard to show the camera that. Anyway, you want to leave maybe a sort of a four or five inch tail. Now you'll have your circle of beads like that. Okay. So this is rows one and two. You're already done two, two of the 10 rows. So for row three, we're going to peyote using 15s and 11s. Let's get started. For these first few, it always looks a little wonky. So I'm gonna lay these in one at a time and try to make sure they're laid out right. You see how I put my thumb on top when I pull it through? I'll show you that again, that's peyote one. I put it to hold it. I don't like my beads to fly around anywhere. I go off my mat. That's two. I think we're going to have a total of eight for this. Three. There it is. Okay. Four. Five. All right, we're getting established now. Five. Don't pull too tight. We're going to be forcing these. Uh, we're going to be forcing larger eleven beads into the spaces created by the fifteens. So you want to keep the tension uh, sort of medium, not too tight. Don't pull too tight anyway. Seven and eight. Okay. There we go. So we've got that part done. You see that? Okay. Now we're at the section with the 11s. 
and we're going to peyote five of our elevens. One, two, three, I'm holding my thumb on it. Okay, two more. Don't pull too tight again. Okay, and we're going down into the first 15 bead. Okay, so that's five, and then we're gonna do another eight. One, two, three. Now I do this, I'll put three or four or five beads in and then give it one pull. That's to save time. Um, I've been beading for more than 20 years. That's just one of my little time saving tricks. If you, you don't feel comfortable with that, I know a lot of people don't, then just do them one at a time. I started beading in the late 90s, and then about 10 years later, I started as a business. So I've been doing beading for a long, long time. Let's see, two more. Seven and eight. Okay, we are almost done with row three. Okay. Now, you see how that's twisting a little bit right there? If you pull this the tail a little bit, it should be, it should go, I'm not demonstrating this very well, let's see. It should sort of indicate which side that should be on. Okay. It doesn't really matter actually, but we're gonna lay it how we want it to be like that. Okay, so we're going to do the last five elevens. One, and we're going to step up at the end. Two, three. Four, all right, that looks a little wonky there. That bead, I believe, needs to go down there. Okay, we're gonna put the last one in and step up. So you're gonna go into one and then up to the next row. Okay, this is row three. Okay, so for the next row, I'm going to change colors, and I will come back to show you that next thing. We'll do a contrasting color. Okay, here we are back with a pile of pink beads. So we've got row three done. We're going to do rows four, five, and six going out, and then we're going to go back to the middle and do rows seven, eight, nine, and ten, and zip them together. So you're going to be working with all 11s from now on. So you can already see this is starting to curve, but what you're going to be doing is putting size 11 beads in the hole, in the, in the spaces left by the size 15 beads. So there's going to be a total of nine this time. We'll be doing the last one at the end. So we've got two, three, four, five, Okay, six, seven, eight, and nine. So 
this is going to make it curve, the fact that we're putting a bit bigger bead into a smaller hole. You can see how that's already starting to curve. Next, it's going to start cupping in a couple of rows, so we'll see that next. Okay, now we've got four, peyote four, here in this section of 11s. One, two, three, four, five, and four. Okay, now we're back to this next section of 15s. If you have wider or skinnier beads with the 15 seed beads, you should use skinny beads if you can find them. One, two, three, Ooh, I really like this color combination. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, there we are. Just make sure there's one sitting in the space that they're, so they're not a little wonky or anything. Okay, next we've got four again. One, two, three, four. Okay, keeping it kind of loose now. Now I've got one more here, and then I'm going to step up. So this is over a 15, I'm picking a nice thin bead. I'm going to go I need that one in it, and up to the next row. OK, now I'm going to do two more rows like this. I'll get going on this row, so that's Let's see, that's row four. Row five, we're going to keep going around in the same way. It should get a little easier now that we have the right size spaces on everything. So start peyoting around. I will do this and I'll come back to show you how it looks at the end of this row and start row, and we'll start row six together. Okay, I'm back. I'm just about to finish row five. Got two more to lay in here. One, and put the last one in here and step up. I don't know if you can see, it's just starting to cup a teeny bit. And on this next row, it'll do even more. So this is going to be row six. It's going to be the last row we're going to do on the outside. So just start peyoting around, same color. This is the third row of pinks. And I will come back at the end of this row to show you what will happen next. We'll go back, to, we'll go down to the inside and I'll show you how this is starting to cup and we'll go down to the inside and start talking about the, the middle section. Okay, I'll see you then, right on the other side. Okay, I'm back at the end of row six. I've got the last bead on my needle, and I'm going to go through, and I'm not going to step up. I'm just going to do that, put that last, that last bead in. See how it's starting to make a little bit of a shape cupping up? That's just perfect. And I'm going to take my thread down. Through an 11 here, and then through three 15s here, and I'm going to take my thread down to the middle. Okay, I've also got rid of my pink beads, and I'm going to be doing this in cream, so you can see this in a contrast too. Now, so this is going to be rows 7, 8, 9, and 10. This next row is probably the most difficult of the, of the piece because you've got to put size 11s in these little tiny spaces and try to keep them straight. So I, you see I kind of moved that out so I can see what I'm doing. 
kind of made it go inside out. We'll pop it back when we're ready. So we're going to have nine, peyote nine in this section, <clears throat> but we are, we're going to be starting on one, two, three, four, five. Again, if you can pick thin beads, that's probably best because you are trying to put this into a tiny little space. Five, six, and you just want to you just want to get the bead in the space as best as you can. It's going to look a little wonky on this row, but it will it will improve. Seven. Let's try to get a thinner one. Eight. See they're kind of sitting together there. It will improve though, don't worry about that. Nine. Okay, we just want to make sure they're kind of in there, lined up. Now we've got to peyote four here in the section with the elevens. One. Two, three, four. All right, we're getting there. Okay. Now we've got nine to go around here again. Again, pick thinner beads if you have. One, two, oh. take it slow. See that one's not quite sitting down in there. You wanna make sure, get it kind of sitting in there as well as you can. You'll feel it kind of pop into place, but don't pull it too tightly. Three, See it popped right in. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, it, it, this is why it's a good idea to count because honestly you come here and there's just the tiniest little space but you need to get a bead in there let's try to see, see if we can find a nice thin one okay nine okay there we go that's the hardest part of this there they are they're all laying in there next row it's all going to get improved Okay, so we've got four in this section with the 11s. One. Two. Three, a little patience is all that's really needed here. Four, okay, we've only got four more beads and then we're finished with this row. One, two, three, four. One. Two. And the last one. Four and step up. So I'm going to do this separately. Four and then step up. And let's have a look at this. Too many beads, right? 
too many beads in a, in a small space. Okay, so that was row seven. Now for row eight, we're gonna continue peyoting around with this color, but it's all gonna fall into place. So let's see how this is gonna look. Make sure the beads are turned the right way. Start your row. And they're, you're gonna see that they're gonna kind of cup up and you can encourage that because it's gonna cup and meet the other side. When you lay these in, they're gonna go out. See that they're already laying better. Just keep going around. On the side, the same thing. Encourage them to move out like that. This is row eight. Okay. Okay. See how much better it looks with this row going around? I'll keep, I'll stay with you and keep going. Just push them into place. As long as they have a place to go, and they do, it's, it's going out, it should be fine. Okay, it's going to even look, look even better on the next row. Okay, we're getting there. Row eight, almost done. Just a few more beads. Two more beads and then step up. One. And, oh wait, there's one more. See, it was hiding from me. There's one more bead and then step up. Step up. So you go through two to the next row. Okay, so look how that's laying better. So that's row eight. We've got two more rows to go, and then we're gonna zip it. So this is gonna this is gonna make the bird, the beads curve out even more. I'm gonna get started on this row, and I will come back at the end to show you what that's gonna look like. Just keep going around. We are getting close to done. And I will come back at the end of this row to go over the last row. And then we'll see the zipping up. Okay, I will be back. Okay, here we are at the end of row nine. We've got one more to put in, and then I'm going to step up. Step up. Okay. I just want to take a look at this structurally, so what's going on, so you understand. We've got three rows in the middle. That's with 15s and 11s. That's in the green. Then we've got on one side three rows of pink, and on the other side three rows of this cream color. So that's nine rows, three, three, and three. So you see how the beads are they're the same on either, each one of these is the same on either side, each side is the same. 
So for the last row, what we're going to do is add one more row, and then that will be used to zip together and connect them. Aha, and now we've got green beads for the connector row, so you can see that too. All right, we're going to lay in one more row. Start peyoteing around. It should be a lot easier now since everything is in the right configuration and shape. It's all coming together. Everything is curved around properly. So just keep laying them in and I'll come back at the end of the row to show you about zipping it up and finishing off your new link. And here we are at the end of row 10. One last bead going in, stepping up. Now, we're done with beads. So go to the side and you'll see there's a green bead that matches up to the spaces between the pink beads. So we're going to go back and forth between pink and green, pink and green. So keep going back and forth between pink and green, pink and green. This is the fun part. So as you're, as you're lining these up, this green row will be on the outside edge. So you can kind of push those beads into the outside. Oh, I don't know why I'm picking up a bead here. Let's see, pink and green. Pink and green. Pink and green. And that will be it. The green ones will be right on the outside edge. Okay, I'm coming up to the end of my zipped row. Let's keep going. This is the fun part. Just connecting it all together. I think that's it. I think I've reached the end. I like to just keep going a bit. And you can tie off this thread, keep going. Double it back, then you can tie it off, but I want to show you how this looks. There are the green beads on the outside edge. Three rows of pink, three rows of cream, and then those three rows of green in the middle. And that's how you make a link for your next project. Thank you for watching. I'm really interested to see what you come up with, what you do with these links. You can make a necklace like this or a bracelet. Um, I've been thinking about making them into earrings. And I do look forward to send me some pictures on social media and let me know what you do with this project. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.